Hey everybody, welcome to the shop, I'm Brent. I've been doing a lot of projects in my new shop, but it seems like every time I get to the end of a project, I've got more mess than I do project. So I decided it was time to upgrade my cleaning game. In the past, I've used a shop vac with a cyclone separator attached to it, but I've never been really happy with the way it works. Um, the way that I had it set up, it was always tipping over, the hoses were always coming off, it was a pain to empty the the dust bucket on it, uh, and it was really loud. So I decided that I was gonna try to address some of these problems and build a shop vac enclosure. I came up with four main goals for this enclosure. Number one is I want it to be as quiet as possible. Let's capture as much of the shop vac noise as we can. Number two, I wanna build the dust separator into the cabinet, and I wanna make it as easy as possible to remove the dust bin. Number three, I want some sort of hose management. Um, Shop vac hoses have always been a real pain. They never stay where you put them. They're always flopping around on the ground. I want somewhere to put the hose. And number four, I want to use the top of this enclosure as a downdraft table. I'm already building this big enclosure. We've already got a shop vac built into it. It should just be a matter of some additional plumbing and we've got a nice self-contained downdraft table. I've been playing around in Fusion 360 and I think I've come up with a design that works. Let's take a look at what I've come up with. So here's what I came up with for the shop vac enclosure. It's a big box. I did divide it into two different chambers. One of them is going to hold the shop vac and the other side is going to hold the uh, dust cyclone and the hose reel. Uh, I separated them so that we can insulate the shop vac side um, with acoustic foam and try to capture as much of the sound as we can. I'm also going to install a baffle. I've got the design here. You can take a look at it. Um, this baffle is going to basically take the air coming out of the shop vac and make it not be able to follow a straight path out of the enclosure. It's going to have to um, you know, travel around all of these dividers, and this is going to be filled with acoustic foam as well. So any sound going through here is going to be uh, both bouncing off of these surfaces plus being absorbed by the foam. So I've got the baffle here. I'll go ahead and show it in the box. So it just mounts in the back of the vacuum chamber here. And let's put the shop vac in there so you can see it's going to be a fairly snug fit around the vacuum. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible, again, because we, we want to be able to use the top of this for our downdraft table, so I can't have it getting too tall. Um, and the other side, we're going to have the uh, dust deputy. There we go. I'll turn it on so you can see it. And this is going to be a, um, a custom install as well. There's not enough height here to use a bucket, which you normally would see with these dust deputies. Uh, plus, it's a pain to get the bucket off of them. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to build a custom dust bin drawer here. It's going to slide out and then raise up and create a seal around it so that the, the dust can fall down into this drawer, and then I can just pull it out to empty it. And then the other thing that's going to go on this side here is the hose reel. So it, the handle is going to stick out through the outside. We're going to be able to wind the hose up and then the door. There's going to be a hole in the door for the hose to come out. So we'll be able to um, keep the door closed and still have access to the hose. And the last thing that I want to add to this was the downdraft table or the downdraft top. There we go and it's pretty simple it's gonna have we're just gonna have a way to hook the hose from the bottom of the downdraft table into the cyclone i don't know if i'll go through the middle here over to the cyclone or if i'll just move this hole over to the other side uh, i was trying to keep it centered but i'm not sure if that's necessary or not and i'm trying to minimize the number of holes that i put on the vacuum side i just want to you know give the sound the least amount of places to escape as I can but there's the there's the overall design so I guess the only thing left to do is to go out and get this thing built okay I wanted to go ahead and get a baseline sound level uh, reading so that we have something to compare uh, once we build our enclosure I've got an SPL meter sitting on this tripod exactly four feet away and at the, at the max height, this tripod will go. So we'll recreate this setup once we've got the enclosure built. 
<clears throat> just to see how much progress we made. Um, this SPL meter has a min-max mode, so we're just gonna set it to max, turn it on, let it run for a few seconds, and then I will show you all what, uh, what we came up with. So we're set to max. All right, so we hit 80.1. I don't want to talk too close to it because I could change the max. I'll go ahead and show it to you all. I'm being cautious because this is not the first time I've done this. So there you go, we hit 80.1. All right, so I guess the next step is let's get to building this enclosure. I thought I'd just show a quick time lapse of the build. We aren't doing anything groundbreaking here, we're just building a big box. Here we're just cutting up the MDF. I'm having my oldest son give me a hand as some of these MDF sheets are a bit heavy and awkward to work with by myself. I didn't have a good way to break it down. I don't have a table saw or a track saw, so I went out and got the Craig AccuCut track system. I'm pretty happy with it. Overall it did a good job. It's definitely better than using a straight edge and clamps, which is what I've used in the past. If I was doing a lot of sheet breakdown, I'd probably go ahead and get a track saw. I think it'd be a little bit less finicky and a little more consistent. Yeah, so after all these cuts, we get to clean up all the lovely MDF dust. Here I am just mocking up the sides to make sure everything fits the way that I expect. It was at this point that I realized that MDF was probably the wrong choice of material for this thing. My plan was to use pocket hole joinery to attach all the edges, but I made a couple of test pieces and realized how weak the MDF was. If you put any force on it at all, the screws just strip right out. So I decided to brace all the edges with some 1x2s to give me something more substantial to screw into. A little bit of extra work, but definitely worth it. It made the joints much, much stronger. I could have glued everything, but I also expected to screw up a lot and probably have to move things around. So I was a little nervous permanently affixing everything. From this point, there was just a lot of measure, cut, install, rinse, repeat. One unexpected tool that I kept finding uses for on this build was my 246 blocks. They were useful for clamping things square and also for uh, extending the reach of some of my clamps. One thing I learned on this build was that I don't have enough clamps. I don't think you can ever have enough clamps but I thought I had quite a few. This build showed me that I needed a lot more and I need a lot bigger clamps. I don't have any large clamps so I did start buying some. Here we're just checking to make sure that everything's fitting the way we expect it. Make sure that the shop back still uh, isn't too big. Had my son come back out and give me a hand. The cabinet's getting a little bit heavy plus we needed to break down some more MDF so we still needed one of the sides cut out and both doors so, break out the circular saw and the AccuCut and start ripping up the MDF. This makes me wish I had a CNC router. It's in the plans, but there's a lot of other CNC machines that may come first. Although, if I have many more projects like that, it may get bumped up in the priority list. Here, I'm starting to put the baffle together. This, again, was another challenge because the pocket screws just were not sufficient to hold it, so I decided to go ahead and glue these pieces in. And it turned out pretty good. The glue holds really well, so all the internal pieces seem to be pretty sturdy. This was another area that really showed off my lack of clamping skills. It was pretty hard to get some of these things clamped in the right position and then get them screwed down. So. But I figured it out in the end, and it turned out pretty good. Here you can see the finished baffle. You can see how there is no straight path from the uh, entrance to the exit. And here we're starting to put on the acoustic foam on the baffle. The next step was cutting out the hole in the bottom of the cabinet that would mate up with the baffle. So went ahead and installed the baffle and realized that I had forgotten to put the cover on it. So here I am putting the cover back on the baffle. Once that got put back on, uh, it was time to figure out where to cut the hole for the hose. 
We're going to run the hose and the electric through the same hole, trying to minimize the number of uh, holes. Then it was time to put in the acoustic foam. So I'm using a spray adhesive here, um, Super 77 by 3M. Works really well. Uh, the only thing I would say is make sure you cover up everything you don't want to get sticky. Uh, my cutting mat there that I was using to cut the foam ended up with a nice gooey layer of adhesive on it and took a while to clean up. So other than that, everything went really well. Here's a shot of the finished chamber. Everything's all wrapped up and ready to get the first coat of paint at this point. Although I do still have to install the door, which I do off camera. Giving it a light sanding before I put on the primer. We've got some Kills primer sealer here that uh, mold and mildew resistant and also should seal the wood up so that it doesn't absorb as much paint. So just touching up some of the spots I couldn't get with the roller with the brush. And once we get everything done and it's dry, we give it a, a light sanding and onto the finished coat. I'm not a fan of painting, but this is about as easy as it gets. Just a big box with very few features. So did not have too many problems with it. Everything went on pretty good. Next, we put on the casters. I went with uh, really small casters, two inch casters, because I'm trying to keep the height of this uh, cabinet as low as possible, because we still have to add on top of it the downdraft table. And I've got smooth floors, so the casters roll just fine. Here I am finishing painting the top of it, and here's the finished product. As you can see, uh, paint job came out good. It does have like an orange peel texture on it a little bit. I think it might be from the roller that I used, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. So the only thing is I did replace that string with a chain. It's just there to keep the door from opening too far, breaking the hinges. Uh, the way I have the hinges mounted, it limits how far that door can open. But overall, I'm very happy with how it turned out. All right, it's time to see how we did. Got our shop vac installed in the enclosure. Uh, we've got our SPL meter here, so we're gonna get a reading and we'll compare it with what we had with no enclosure. So let's go ahead and get the reading. So 65, 60, 65.8, um, that's quite a bit quieter. I can tell you subjectively that the shop vac is much quieter than it was before. Uh, all the high pitch whining is gone. It's now just a low rumble. Um, you could easily carry on a conversation right next to this. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. So, all right, so phase one is done. We've got our cabinet built. We've done all the acoustic treatment. It's doing a great job keeping the shop back nice and quiet. So our next steps are that we've got to build in the dust deputy here, build a custom hose reel for our hose, and then install a uh, downdraft table on top of this. <laughs> so just when you think you're approaching the end, you realize how much you've got left, but that's okay. Uh, I'm very happy where the cabinet's at, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. So if you're enjoying the build, please click the like button. Uh, click subscribe if you'd like to see how it turns out. And please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.